Hey there, Spark fans. It's Aubrey here. The Raspberry Pi Foundation's release of its very first microcontroller, the Pico, has been an amazing showcase of how much can be packed into such a low-cost board. But perhaps what's even cooler than that is the release of their very first silicon chip, the RP2040. And by allowing partners to take the RP2040 and build their own unique boards with a variety of components and purposes, the foundation has effectively capitalized on the open source community that's made them so successful in the first place. Here at SparkFun, we've built three different boards based off of the RP2040. But today, I wanted to dive deeper into two of them, the RP2040 Thing Plus and the RP2040 Pro Micro. Let's take a closer look. First, let's take a look at the general aspects of the RP2040 chip that's on both of these boards. It has dual Cortex M0 Plus processors running up to 133 megahertz, 264 kilobytes of embedded SRAM in six banks, six dedicated I.O. for QSPI flash supporting XIP, 30 programmable I.O. for extended peripheral support, SWD interface, a timer with four alarms, a real-time counter, and it supports the programming languages of MicroPython and C++. C++. The RP2040 Pro Micro comes in the Pro Micro footprint and is equipped with a WS28112B addressable LED and a power LED, as well as a boot button, a reset button, a quick connector, a resettable PTC fuse, castellated pads, and a USB-C connector for programming with USB 1.1 host device functionality. It comes with 20 multifunctional GPIO pins, including 10 PWM channels, and an array of serial peripherals, including two UARTs, the one quick-enabled I2C, and one SBI. It also has three 12-bit ADC channels, although only three are available because one is tied up at a specific pin. There's also a separate ADC pin connected to an internal temperature sensor. Lastly, we've chosen to give this board 16 megabytes of external flash memory to provide you with a hefty amount of space to save and run programs. The RP2040 Thing Plus is built on the popular Feather footprint and has 18 GPIO pins, including four ADC channels and an additional internal temperature sensor, up to eight two-channel PWM, two UARTs, two I2C buses, and up to two SBI buses. It also includes an SD card slot, a JST single cell battery connector, which is a charging circuit and a fuel gauge sensor, JTAG PTH pins, and four mounting holes. Similarly to the Pro Micro, the Thing Plus has an addressable WS2812 RGB LED, a quick connector, a USB-C connector with USB 1.1 host device functionality, a boot and a reset button, and 16 megabytes of flash memory. One of the perks of the RP2040 is that it's awfully enticing to run some machine learning models with the chip. The RP2040 SoC enables maximum performance of machine learning inference at the lowest power due to its energy-efficient dual-arm Cortex M0 Plus cores working at a relatively higher frequency of 133 MHz. There's a version of the TensorFlow Lite Micro Library specifically ported for the RP2040 chip, which allows you to run machine learning models like voice recognition, detecting people in images, and recognizing gestures. We can actually take TensorFlow models, which tend to be too large for a microcontroller, and compress them down so they can run on a microcontroller. For example, there's a very famous machine learning model developed by Google called the Burke Question and Answer. You know how when you're on a website chatting with a bot, it tends to return a lot of the same keywords that you asked in the first place. And that's because it uses a lot of the same principles as BERT. It's a long-standing goal in the natural language processing community to have machines read and comprehend human language. And the BERT machine learning model does so by learning the contextual relations between words in a text. It takes an encoder to read the text's input and a decoder to produce a prediction for that task. It reads the text bidirectionally so that instead of reading left to right and right to left and missing out on a lot of the information, it understands the context of the word based on its surroundings. You know, it's the difference between just man eats and man eats man. So we can load, pre-process, and evaluate a TensorFlow BERT question and answer model transfer it into some C files, and then load it onto the RP2040 Thing Plus, and basically build an on-the-go trivia partner. Let's give it a try. There are really five steps for training this machine learning model, which is first to choose a model, 
second, to load data, third, to retrain the model with the data, four, to evaluate it, and five, to export it to TensorFlow Lite format. We'll use the mobile BERT model since it's thin and compact for resource-limited microcontroller use. We'll then load in a large-scale trivia reading comprehension data set containing over 650,000 question-answer evidence data points, which we can use to train and evaluate the model. TensorFlow has developed highly documented workflows for running these machine learning models so you can understand step-by-step -step how to build a model. Since this model is much too large for microcontrollers, we can use something called dynamic range quantization on the model to compress it four times with very minimal loss of performance. That will export a file in the format of TF Lite. So lastly, we'll have to convert the TF Lite model into C code using XXD so that we can compile and use the program on the RP2040 Thing Plus. Now, we'll run inference on the RP2040, or basically run the model entirely on the microcontroller after loading in the C files and processing results. This is a fairly complicated process that effectively loads the model onto the board and allocates enough space to run the model. But after running inference and establishing the model on the RP2040 Thing Plus, we can load in example data and call functions in a console to see if it can figure out the answer. In this case, it's picked up a variety of answers for the question about the Amazon. In future iterations, it would actually be cool to save some of these answers to the SD card in the RP2040 Thing Plus to document them for later use. But besides both of these boards being able to run very complex machine learning models, they have tons of other use cases. It could be a macro keyboard, a MIDI project, or really anything else. The fact that the RP2040 allows for coding in both MicroPython and C means that you can do do-it-yourself projects and technical embedded solutions. So you better get yours today at sparkfun.com and get hacking. Hey there, Spark fans. It's Oliver here. We're going to just do this one more time. <laughs> this was our intro. The RP2040 Thing Plus and the RP4... Oh, man. All right, this is going to be a long one, so just stick around for this <laughs> and get hacking. Have a good one day. I don't know what I said there. <laughs> <laughs> for example, there's a long time... This is... I didn't know I was like, get hacking, and then I was like, happy good day. Yeah. We're doing great today, you know? Just on a roll. We're gonna do this one more time and then we're gonna be done. This right. is gonna be the last one. Here at SparkFun, we've built three different boards centered around the art. Oh man. Mm. <laughs> Merry Christmas.